All right. Okay. Talk talk five. Thanks for coming back. We're going to talk, um, going to talk to you about an introduction, a brief introduction to PROMS, patient reported outcome measures, and how PROMS might or can improve healthcare. Okay, this is the background and context. This is a, a, a report from the King's Fund, which is a policy think tank in England. I don't know if you've heard uh, about it uh, of the King's Fund. But essentially, 2010, um, they did a, a, a lengthy report on called the Getting the Most Out of Problems, and they summed it up very well. Despite a century of developments in medical technology and vast improvements, the ability of medical science to prevent, diagnose, treat disease and ill health, attempts to measure the outputs of healthcare in terms of their impact on patients' health have not progressed beyond Florence Nightingale's time. So for only many, many years, um, the outcome we measured has been death. Uh, but while, while Florence Nightingale collected data on the dead, alive, our routine collection of outcome data has continued to be a similar focus, dead or alive, dead or alive. We haven't really progressed beyond it, this is what we're trying to say. <clears throat> the background and the context of outcomes is, well, we, we already looked at quality and effectiveness, and essentially what we're really interested in is what is the outcome of the patient. You know? um, <clears throat> we have some reasons for healthcare. Essentially, we want to live longer. But not only do we want to live longer, we want to um, increase our number of years, but also increase our quality of life so that we're living longer and better. So I think the, the, the two um, together uh, can help us uh, summarize as you know two two aspects of what we can see as better health outcome, and essentially, uh, we want to know uh, essentially through the effectiveness of treatment whether or not we are uh, having better health outcomes, so longer li life and better quality of life. But traditionally, our health services have focused on measuring one single outcome, mortality, and that is important. Uh, we know. That, however, you know, no, you know, that helps us know whether or not we're surviving. We're living, we're living, basically. But it's binary, isn't it? Um, and uh, it only gives us a part of a picture. And with medical advances in technology, lots of people are no longer dying. We are surviving, alive. You know, outcome one, alive. So, but are we living better? Are we living longer? And it, uh, how's the health, the quality of life? of the survival. Um, and I, increasingly, this is becoming more and more of an important and more of a, more of a focus now because things are not fatal, you know, multi-morbidity, comorbidities, but can consider, con cause considerable disability or reduce quality of life. Okay, so measuring health. I mentioned traditional ways of measuring. We like to measure mortality, very important. We need to continue to measure it. There's no way saying we don't need to measure mortality. Um, then also, we also used to, are very used to measuring impairment, recording symptoms and signs, uh, recording mo mobility of the patient, uh, uh, how much pain they have. These are all what we learned from day one of medical school. Uh, and there's a mostly clinician uh, reported loss, abnormality of physiological function, anatomical function. You know, every clinician um, is very well trained and we're used to doing that. And in the health service, routinely, these are recorded in case notes um, and can be pulled up as a form of routine assessments quite, quite easily. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, these are usually clinical, clinically reported by nurses, doctors, the clinical team. Now there is an increasing focus to measure in terms of symptoms functional status and disability. The WHO calls it now activity restriction. And also health related quality of life or well-being, what they call activity participations, different terms, but essentially measuring the same things. And also satisfaction with outcomes. The last is patient experience, or some people call it PREMS. They're different from PROMS, okay? But essentially, increasingly, health status, health symptoms, disability, quality of life, health status and well-being is increasingly important to capture, you know, are we living better, that question. Um, and these have to be patient reported. So either patient reported outcomes 
these the first two, or uh, patient reported experience should be the last, the, the last one. So <clears throat> that's why this is necessarily these are necessary to be patient reported and are essentially subjective measures. Okay, so how do we measure health data? Three different uh, ways of doing that. Clinician reported, which I also mentioned, patient reported, uh, and also objective clinical measures. Okay, so <clears throat> there's often a, a cause of confusion in the field of measurements between objective and subjective measures. I just want to clarify it here that you know a lot of cl uh, clinicians kind of feel that oh, usually objective measures are seen to be more trusted and better than subjective measures, and that is incorrect. Um, we know objective measures such as blood tests, x-rays, and observations from examinations, etc. Um, and we know that, um, well, that, that that's objectively measured, but it's a statistical probability. You know, we're varying, but a blood test can say, are you outside the normal range or, or um, you know, in the, uh, outside when abnormal, inside normal, but there is a probability and a distribution. Okay, Clini clinician and signs from clinical examination are objective with a degree of subjectivity. Okay, so you know when, when a doctor assesses how much pain the patient has, they're, they're using their own subjective judgment. For example, the degree of knee movement, pain on the abdominal examination. Okay, that, that's a degree of subjectivity. Then we've got things like quality of life, um, how the patient feels um, they, they can. Um, and that, if we want to know that, that can only be subjective. Okay, so whether or not, uh, so for example, if you want to look at dietary supplement, whether taking this tablet will increase your red blood cells, you can have an objective measure. All you need to do is give this patient tablet after tablet after tablet, and then take some blood and see if the red blood cells have increased. Then they know it's sufficient. You know, this is if you if that's what you want to know. But if you want to know how taking this dietary supplement, this tablet, affects this person's symptoms, then you need to ask a subjective assessment. You can't just measure the red blood cells. You have to ask them, you know, are you feeling less tired? How's your fatigue? Questions about the symptoms. And that is from the patient's perspective. So the objectivity and subjectivity doesn't mean one's more accurate or more trusted. It, they're both um, used for different things. Um, and that's important to know. There's also a lot nowadays of validated instruments to be able, you know, for us to ask subjective questions, um, which has good validity for objective states. So for example, an objective measure of how far someone can walk, you can do a neurological examination and watch someone walk a distance and walk back. You can watch someone climb a flight of stairs and come down a flight. So those will be objective measures and then record it. Oh, 100 meters, fine. But you can also ask someone, can you walk up a flight of stairs without much pain? Can you walk up and down a flight of stairs? And then they, can, they will tell you, and that would be patient reported. And that would be a subjective measure versus an objective measure, but they have very good and accurate validity. It's more difficult to, to you know, get someone to, to go to someone's house and watch them walk up and down the stairs. Much easier to ask a subjective uh, uh, through a questionnaire. So that's why short functional status questionnaires are now validated and getting more and more uh, uh, relevant and uh, much easier to do and has, have excellent uh, reliability and validity. So that's why subjective measures are now widely used. So just to give you a background on patient reported questionnaires. Okay, so a little bit more background. Uh, in England, uh, in the last 10, 15 years, there's been a steady shift and how we should be measuring the quality of care. Essentially, um, nicely um, uh, summed up by uh, Lord Ira Darcy, which led the sort of a clinical review in the in a strategic quality of care back in the late late 2000s. Uh, and so he said, if quality is at, to be at the heart of everything we do for the NHS, he's talking about, it must be understood from a perspective of patients. Patients pay regard to both clinical outcomes and the experience of the service. So he's saying we have to ask it from the perspective of the patients. And Donald Burrick <clears throat> also wrote, uh, an American this time, um, uh, that the ultimate measure by which to judge the quality of medical effort is whether it helps the patients as they see it. So increasingly, the health services has a more focus to be patient-centered 
And you know, we always hear people say, patient-centered care, patient-centered service, that's how to make our service more patient-centered. And they can mean lots of things, but essentially it's asking the patient's perspective of how they see it through their experience of it, but also through their outcomes. And PROMS is talking about how they see their outcomes.